the... Why didn't you tell me that? Oh. Oh, you're right. You are face palming, is it? Sidearm. You have to bring all of them down. Okay. Good. That's one for you. So, all of the parts that are pitched, which are these. Yes. Oh. So, we have to bring. We have to bring them down one, two, three, four, five steps. One, two, three, four, five steps, like that. And then. Yeah, it sounds more like it. And we can still call this, uh, okay, this is, oh, for goodness sake. I was changing the wrong thing. Well, the good news is, the more we do this, the quicker we learn how to... Two, three, four. Save. So now, what it sounds like is this. So for this to work, um, the vocalist would have to be able to sing those different cadences, but that could work. And also we would probably want to soften the trumpets and stuff so that the voice can stand out more, but we can do that. So we're going to stop right there. This is good work, actually, we feel. Um, it certainly sounds different in G. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of composing a ballad in C full tonality, which also turns out to bring it down to G in order to adjust for an actual live singer's voice range. We did several things today. Uh, one of the things we're about to do is um, re-export. We were, we were showing how to use MIDI animations. And uh, to, to do a MIDI animation, you do an export and you choose a MIDI file and then you put it where in this case we are going to be doing a ballad instrumental movie and we created some sound files here and uh, just to show you what that looks like the MIDI animation uh, this one here we go to MIDI animation music animation machine and we open the ballad in C and uh, there's two ways that can be looked at. One is this way.
So you can see that the drum and the snare are being replicated as uh, green and purple notes. And down here is the bass and up here is the snare. And then the clarinet and the trumpet and the voice and the glock are checking along. Then we come into the interlude and come into the third part and we did some more tweaks of the volume and, and the extra. You have an introduction and an extroduction at the end. Now the other way that we're viewing this is what's called the pitch wheel and that would like this. And the point of that is it it can be used to communicate the idea if we're down here. See how the more harmonic, less discordant version has everything kind of stacked on one side of the color wheel, whereas over here where it's very discordant, you can see that it's spread out more. And the way that the pitch wheel works is it naturally puts consonant sounding thingies all together on the wheel and discordant ones tend to be more spread out just like this and so we were saying what we, ha what we have in mind doing here is a uh, a musical video where we put the solo trumpet and the solo glockenspiel have their own color wheel and then the bass and snare are over here and the voice and clarinet will be showed as that piano roll effect and we exported we created separate standalone scores for each of these four parts and recorded the, uh, exported them so that we could play them in the MIDI. So as an example, um, the solo trumpet would play like this. Again, we scoot ahead here. So you can see how spread out those are. And if we come down to where it's more consonant, everything's on the right hand side, so to speak. Then we also had the uh, the glockenspiel. Now remember the glockenspiel has passing chords and it's hitting three notes at once. And so the color wheel shows what it's doing and here's where it's more consonant. Then we had what, the other key parts, as we mentioned, were the drum and the, the bass and snare are a lot more simple.
and this is where they're very soft and at the very end they get loud again for the extroduction. Well, they maybe somewhere they get loud. Yeah, there. And then the clarinet and the um, voice are going to sound a lot better. I mean, visual. See, there's too much going on there. So we want to change that view to... We said we we're going to use... Um, Is that right? Check our diagram. Yep, there it is. Voice and clarinet have the... And so you can see the voice is what looks like a pale green-yellow and the clarinet arpeggios are the purple. So we did all that. We have those files created and we're in a position to make a music video except we have to make a movie of those things playing that we just showed you. We're using OBS software to stream and we also use OBS software to record and so we have to record offline and then come back and show you how we put those together in a video file. So that concludes today's recap and tune in next time for more on the video and more on the karaoke. We did quite a bit of work on, on how to make a karaoke version and in particular we had to bring it down from C to G so the singer, the poor singer's voice could um, could straddle the octave without straining themselves too much. So this is what it sounds like in C. And then G. And uh, it does sound a little darker, but that's just kind of a comparison thing. So ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, thank you again for your time and attention and interest. And as always, keep on streaming.